Hi guys, Frost Fangs here, welcome back once again, of course, to another Paladins video, a bit of a weird one, my first video technically on Season 5, because it's sort of, but not really, leaked early, I don't really know what's happened, I'll explain it as we get in, but as you can see, Paladins looks a little bit different, so I'm on the PTS, anybody can launch the PTS, you can just boot it up, and it should put you in the exact same thing I'm in, as long as it hasn't been taken down for whatever reason. You can also access the patch notes by just going to the new section of Paladins, clicking on it, you do need a password, which is Tribunal, and then you can just get in and view everything in the update, aside from the new champion, who is absent from the patch notes and also isn't on the PTS for some reason. As far as I know, this hasn't ever happened where we've had everything except for the new champion and the PTS has come up and the patch notes have been available, but they haven't really talked about it publicly at all. They posted a teaser like a day or two ago and that's it, but now everything is available somehow. It's it's all very weird, but hopefully you get what I mean. Just to reiterate, the new champion isn't available. I have no info on him except for his avatar, so I'm not going to talk about that at all, but we do have, first off, a Maeve skin, another one. We have a Ray one as well, so I guess we'll do that first, which I do like quite a bit. I'm glad she's getting another one so soon. We've got Class President and Valedictorian. Don't know how I feel about the blue skin. Looks a little bit weird, but I do like the base one quite a lot. Will match the Only Tile skin quite well and will definitely be one I use with Ray. The Pumpkin Patch is giving it quite a bit of competition, but this is a top-notch skin in my opinion. I know some people won't like it. For me, I dig it quite a bit. Then we have a Maeve one. Going through these kind of quick, which is should be here at the bottom, study hall and schoolyard. Another Mayu skin, kind of like a school evil theme. I really don't know what the proper way to describe this would be, but you can see it. It also looks pretty good, but Mayu has a ton. Don't really know why you'd grab this over the other ones. Yeah, we've got Azan next. He's getting a skin as well. I think it's this one. No, where is it? Dark Drake. There we go. Also looking fan freaking tastic. I don't know a better way to explain what I'm looking at here, but it's a dragon and evil, and it looks great. It fits his arm fantastically. Face is a little bit weird, but overall, I do really dig this skin as well. It looks really, really nice. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do a recolor of this that was kind of purple and white a little bit more to match the Drogo's one that's in a similar theme. The wings are also kind of attached, but not really attached. It'd be nice if those were a little bit further out, but they probably can't do it because of the model. Looks great, though. They do also have voice packs, but I'm not here to cover everything super in-depth. I'm just going over it and letting you guys know what's going to be in the next update, kind of earlier than I intended to because I don't think we're getting this patch anytime soon or the new champion in the PTS or the patch note show. I really don't know what's happening, but I'm going to be here and covering it, I guess. If anything else does become public or is leaked or whatever, I'll probably leave it in a pinned comment or I'll just make another video. I was expecting to take a couple more days before coming back, so that's why everything here might be a little bit messy, but we've got Jurassic Ying next. Looks really, really good. All of the skins in this update just absolutely knock it out of the park, in my opinion. Like they do exactly what they were setting out to do. They all look really, really good. Definitely be making other videos fully on these skins, focusing and, you know, showing all the effects and all of that sort of stuff, and then I'll make videos on the balance stuff as I usually do, so stay tuned to the channel for sure. Next up, we've got Willow. Had to check because I genuinely don't remember. There's so much stuff in this update. We've got Will.O. Also, just really, really well done. Completely changes how Willow looks. Might have a bit of a gameplay advantage if I think about it, but it just looks fantastic. I guess we can unlock these, and maybe I'll jump into the target practice really, really quick just to show you guys Super Turbo. The PTS has definitely been pretty bugged, so don't expect to be able to actually jump in and play on it. I know a bunch of people have been having issues. Some stuff hasn't been implemented properly. The skins haven't really been unlocking the right way. Bunch of stuff has happened that is it for the skins there is also a mount but i don't know if i can actually go ahead and grab that it's a dinosaur onto the actual update though because that's pretty much all i really wanted to show you here in game can i actually even jump into the shooting range will it actually load me in and we can grab i think the race skin which is the one that i equipped quickly just to see if it works and then we'll go over the patch notes and i'll read through the more detailed balance stuff because there's a lot of balance stuff honestly really really big changes we'll go ahead grab ray have i got the skin I actually do it's actually like loading in and everything really really weird there's a look at the effects very quickly yeah i'm not going to focus too much here in this video because it's going to be an overview and i'll do more detailed stuff in the future i got to milk paladin stuff wherever i can all right moving on to the patch notes season five do not post i think it's going to be called Shism, I'm guessing it's how you say it, because it's got that there. New champion, as you can see, redacted. I'm assuming this was posted intentionally and made to look like a leak, but it might actually be a genuine leak. I have no idea, but we're here. We've got the Hunter's Academy event pass thing with the skins I just showed you. Yep, yeah, there you go. Some other unlocks that come with it. I could have scored through the whole battle pass, but most of you guys are here for the skins. And again, this is an overview. If you want to see this stuff more in depth, I'll be making future videos. And you can also just go to the news section, type in the password, which is, again, Tribunal. It's everywhere all over social media. It's not like I'm personally here leaking anything. Limited time modes. Then you've got Golden Pip. You've got the Azan skin, which I showed you. Jurassic. 
Ying, then you've got the mount, which is just going to be a standard sort of dinosaur, though I hope in-game it will actually, you know, have proper animation so it looks not just super rigid like some of the motorbikes do, or did, I think they actually fixed quite a few of them. Then we have community content, okay, yeah, bunch of avatars and stuff. Also, one more thing I forgot to mention and forgot to show you on the BTS, there's a Victor skin that's in the game, and I saw it also on social media, that isn't actually mentioned anywhere in the patch notes, it's called Rambo, I'm sure it's not a crossover with Rambo, it's not meant to be licensed, it'll probably have a different name. It's not mentioned in the patch notes anywhere, unlike the other skins, but you can actually use it. I'll show a clip on screen while I'm talking about it, I'm sure. Forgot to do it when I was actually on the BTS, I'll do it on post. But yeah, there's a Rambo Victor skin, I guess, coming or in development or on the BTS by accident. I have no idea. This video is messy, just like the rollout of the patch itself, because I have no idea what's happening. We then have the Willow skin and the general update. So there's a bunch of stuff happening here. I'll talk about it a little bit here and I'll talk about it more in other videos as I'm playing on the BTS or when the update goes live because I obviously need something to talk about when I'm making my normal gameplay sort of content. We've got Siege Beyond and in the coming year basically they're talking about how they're going to be doing really big updates. I'm looking forward to Paladins 2022. They want it to be the biggest year ever. I do too. The easiest way for me to explain what this section is here is that there's going to be a new version of Siege called Siege Beyond with new features. They don't really talk about it and in the future they're going to be doing these things called schisms which are big changes and depending on how you guys receive them the community in general they'll either stay and be permanent or they'll just roll them back before they try the next big schism or big thing so the first one the first big change or schism i again don't know how to say it, is going to be a change to the item store I haven't really looked into this too much i've just read what they've said here and it does sound interesting it's really hard to judge that sort of stuff before you actually play with it but judging from the change here it could be really good could make paladins a lot easier and could make it more welcoming to new players they're also actually removing quarter rise which is a bit of a spoiler for something later on in the patch notes so maybe this will be a better system i haven't looked into the nitty gritty details of it so i don't know for sure but that's the first schism moving on to the rest of the update we've got ranked frames more frames and then design and balance which is straight on to what i was just saying the quarter eyes change or removal i suppose this is definitely going to be a divisive thing but quarter eyes is being removed and it's basically going to be implemented into your character's base hit and will scale depending on the mode and how long the game's been going on so it'll start 25 percent everybody will have 25 percent and then as the game goes on depending on the mode and a bunch of other stuff it'll go up to 90 percent which i think overall is a good idea quarter eyes has always been a very unique thing in paladins and i think this is a very unique solution which is overall going to be i think a good thing i can't really see too many ways where this would be terrible and i just see possible upsides to it i guess we'll have to wait and see though it's really hard to judge just from reading this sort of stuff on text without actually seeing it in game over the period of a couple of months but yeah really it's not really that quarter is being removed it's just being implemented into a base kit so you don't actually have to think about buying it because you're always gonna have it so it's overall i think a good thing although if you love healers and you want to see huge numbers all the time maybe you're going to get that a little bit less often it's complicated quarter is such a complicated thing it doesn't really fit in the scope of this video so we're going to move on to items i could literally make it like an entire 30 minute video about quarter if i wanted to and i don't so we're going to move on we've got provision which is the item that's replacing quarter is going to be ammo after you get in a limb interesting does also kind of play in to what quarter is being changed to to being an in-hand thing is definitely a selective item for some characters it will be useless for others it will be something you'll definitely want to pick up veteran and rejuvenate are getting a slight buff and then on to the actual champion changes as on as you would expect is getting nerfed pretty substantially but i still think it will be really really good they're removing the damage reduction from the talent that gives you life steal something that i actually directly suggested i'm glad they're doing it that makes it sound like i say it to evil mojo directly i didn't i don't talk to evil mojo but i mentioned it in a video i think everybody agreed that it was a good idea i don't really know why it was in there to begin with sanctuary is going to be refireable to cancel which is great you can now de-deploy your wall if you threw a really bad one or you just want to de-deploy it great change i'm really glad they implemented it it makes it a little bit less unique but i think it's overall a good thing actually makes it separated a bit from an R as well a bit more so maybe it's more unique i uh, know aya is going to have the damage reduction in it you know taken down from 20 to 15 percent pretty standard and judgment is going to have reduced range from 450 to 300 then for conviction you're going to have the cc immunity removed and the debuff immunity removed i don't know why it really had it to begin with it made you feel kind of more like you know as on looks and is sort of meant to feel i think as a character but it was a little bit too strong so i understand why they've taken that off then he's also getting two of his cards nerfed grim deliverance which is the heal whenever you use your ability percentage of your eye you know what i mean then also eternal strife which is just the heal when you use your ability above your threshold i think most of these changes make sense i mean pretty much everybody agreed that azan was overpowered i think they're keeping him in the same sort of area that they want him to be in but just at a lower sort of level barrack is getting a slight nerf to his ultimate when you're grabbing the talent that changes it into like the super turrets going up from 35 to 40 really small change black is getting overall a few little buffs to some of his cards but 
pretty minor stuff. Definitely good changes. I think it's more in the direction of Buck's identity. Can't complain, to be honest. I don't think these will make him overpowered or anything. Same sort of thing with Eevee, just pushing her more in the direction of where she is as a character with speed and sort of the hyper, you know, energy that Eevee has. Then Fernando is getting nerfs to his shield, just pretty general nerfs for his shield, to be honest. Not much else I can say there. Pretty standard stuff. Fury is getting a slight buff to Cherish. I'm not going to talk about that here because I want to make a full video on Furia and the spot she's in at the moment, which I don't think is the best. Again, don't want to make this video too long. I'll talk about it way more when I make another Furia video. I know I've been gone for pretty much all of December. I posted like two or three videos, it feels like, but I will be coming back in 2022, hopefully stronger than ever. Hopefully similar to Paladins, to be honest, because this patch is looking real juicy so far. Then similar to Furia, Grok is getting a slight buff to Atomic Ward. Anara is getting a buff to her ultimate, so you fire it a little bit faster and the range on it's a little bit bigger. Jonas is getting a buff to his heals, which I didn't really expect. His Astral Mark is going up from 180 a second to 200, and Luminary is getting a buff from 250 to 285, they say here in the developer commentary, which I haven't really been reading because it's pretty much what you'd expect, that Jonas is underperforming and they're buffing the healing aspect of him a little bit. We can't really talk too broadly about it because in some situations Jonas is just really, really good, but in others, I think he does lack behind other healers, and this number increase will help that a little bit. Khan is getting a buff to the stun. I still think it's kind of rough, 1.2 to 1.4. Don't know why you'd really grab that over the other talent, but now it'll be at least a little bit of a better decision than it was before. Then Leanne is getting a nerf to her alacrity, as I was kind of expecting, and a lot of people, I'm sure, were hoping. It's getting nerfed technically by two seconds, because alacrity used to reduce your cooldown by one. Now that you're going to increase your cooldown by one, as far as I can understand here, so... They're actually going to make it two seconds longer if you go for Lacti, which is a bit weird. I don't feel like it needed to increase by one. I think it's just going to reduce the one second, but uh, whatever. It's being nerfed again. Moving on to Makoa. Buffs I'm happy to see because I think he's a character that should be picked up more often. He's definitely fallen behind a bit, as they say here in the developer commentary. They buffed his damage by 25 a hit. Will add up over the course of a game and buff some of his sustain. Pip is actually just getting a straight buff to Combat Medic with 10% extra fire rate if you grab it. They say here that it's to make it a little bit more effective, of course. I can't see it making it overpowered, but it should make it feel a little bit better. Sati is getting some buffs that I'm happy to see. The radius of the coin is going up by 20%, and it will now actually work differently where it will target the closest enemy on the first hit and then the lowest health enemy after the first one. They're also increasing the size of the projectiles from your Q. Really, really happy with those changes to Sati. I think that will make her feel quite a bit better and will make me feel a little bit less bad about the fact that Vora is getting nerfed, which is something that I'll get to in a minute. Sati and Vora are like my two favourites at the moment, so Sati going up a little bit and Vora falling down makes it just a little bit softer. Then Sky is getting just a buff to her base health and base speed. Talos is getting a nerf, weirdly, to the F reset. They're moving it from just a straight reset to a six second reset. I understand where they're going, but I feel like they need to do something else here because or else no one's really going to grab this one, I don't think. Can't really speak for everybody, of course, but for me, if it's only a six second reset, I wouldn't grab it. The whole reason why inner strength is so much fun to use is because you're going in a fight, dropping your F down, resetting and getting your ability straight back and you just instantly are kind of back in the action. It will feel really, really bad if you go for inner strength, you try and do that combo and you're left with like three seconds on your cooldown or two seconds on your cooldown. I just think this will make it feel janky. Moving on to Torvald, we've not got that many left. He's actually getting some pretty significant buffs. They do say here, likely, that they are still planning to make some big changes with him, which I'm looking forward to. I was actually hoping that they hadn't forgotten and moved on from that because Torvald still could do with being altered, I think, as a character. But here they say the Hyper Beam will give you CC immunity. That makes a ton of sense. I don't know why it didn't always do that, to be honest. The actual weapon damage is going up from 190 to 200. I'm pretty sure it used to be 200, then they put it down to 180. Now it's back at 200. That's a bit weird. They're also reducing the movement speed penalty when you're actually using your silence. And then just a buff, or I guess change to the card that was not really useful when you were getting extra speed when you're recharging. Now it's after you recharge. Yeah, there's a bunch of cards we're talking about that could do with changes too. Don't know why they just picked this one. I feel like I'm crapping on Evil Mojo a little bit too much in this video, but that's overall a really good change. I'm really excited for this update. It's looking to be a really, really top-notch start to Season 5, although I haven't seen the new character yet. So maybe they'll drop the ball with that, and maybe some of these specific changes with like the items and the new item shop won't properly hit. We'll see, but just from what it looks like on paper, seems really interesting and we'll switch up Paladins a lot for sure. Anyway, back to complaining. Tyra is just getting an update to her text, but Vora, on the other hand, is getting the damage immunity removed from her ultimate, so it's not really going to feel that much of an ultimate anymore because that's the main reason people used it, was to get kind of the immunity and to escape or to execute. I think like this, people are just going to avoid the ultimate, except for the CC immunity, so you will still use it for that, 
I suppose they're reducing the projectile to deadly scythe by 10%. Does kind of make sense. It was a little bit too big for sure, but I don't know if that'll feel good or not. I need to play with it, of course. They're also buffing Deafening Silence, but I don't really like that as a talent at all. I feel like that could just be changed to something else, but Vora is in a pretty solid spot. I'm going to read the developer commentary. There are certain aspects of a kit, though, that make it frustrating to play against. I agree with that, even as somebody who really likes Vora. Her ultimate has two moments where she's unable to take damage at the start and during the execution. I guess they are keeping the execution, so it still will be somewhat useful, but maybe they should just make it damage reduction instead of damage immunity. Maybe that would feel overall better. Uh, projectiles using 10% of the size also reduces the cases where people feel like they've been hit when they shouldn't have been. Even me going against Vora as Vora or as other characters, I've been hit around corners. It's an element that I like about Vora because of the way the projectile works. You can kind of cheese it a bit. Definitely felt to me that it made her rather unique, but it did feel cheesy when you were being hit. It didn't feel like you were meant to be. I feel like I kind of got used to it after going against Vora so much. It wasn't that often where it really annoyed me, but I know playing it, it felt really satisfying. So maybe that projectile size reduction make it feel a lot worse and also reduce the cheese. So it's kind of a good and a bad thing for me. I don't know. Anyway, on to the last one. Yagrath just getting some pretty straight nerfs. Damage reduction going down by 5%. The Devour ultimate thing is getting reduced like the speed and also the increased time between when you start pulling them and the health you have in it just overall enough to yag. I don't really know what the hell happened. I'm assuming again like I said at the start that it was intentional and also not intentional at the same sort of time. PTS being up as well as the patch notes is really what confused me and threw me off because I thought that this was just kind of bait and then I logged in and I'm like oh it's actually all here. <laughs> Very weird video to come back with but I'll have more stuff of course coming soon. I'll probably take a day or two off to rest my voice and also you know it is Christmas. I hope you have a great time over the holiday period if you celebrate it and if you don't you know regardless I hope you have a kick-ass time and you've had a kick-ass time for the time that I've been gone. Feels kind of weird to end the video here but thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed of course let me know what you want to see me the next. I'll see you guys all really really soon and as always stay frosty.